your bass player and you're like, here, Jared, yeah, you I mean, love the bass. Kind of. They, I just knew that they were going to start a band and I didn't want them to like, I don't know, be in a band without me because like we had listened to so much music together and like helped each other out finding all these great bands and like we'd always talked about it and then when they were going to do it, I mean, I just didn't want to be left out. So I was like, man, I got to do something. And he already played the guitar when he was younger and he was a guitar player and he wrote songs and he wrote the songs and they would play, like he played drums and I knew that was the only available, you know, instrument to play. So I went and bought one and I pretty much locked myself in there for like a month just listening to records, you know, listening to all the people I thought I needed to listen to to learn how to play. I just pretty much copied them and ripped them off a little bit. So if Jared didn't work out, what would happen? Would you go outside the family? Yeah, no, we have more cousins. We have a lot of cousins. <laughs> a lot of cousins. So it wasn't a short end for you. I know it, man. It was tough. <laughs> yeah. But did you get to listen to any secular music growing up? Yeah, but like the music that we really listened to, it was still the same kind of like broken down. Like we loved Chuck Berry and Jimmy Reed and all the oldies kind of music, you know, Johnny Cash and Neil Young and Bob Dylan and stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure like at extremely young ages we listened to everything that's bad that everyone else listened to, but, you know, when we started to get some wits about us, we actually listened to pretty decent music. Because so. you guys didn't have MTV, right? No. no we, we didn't have, been, like, didn't have radio MTV or... at all. So do you think that helped influence your sound? Why you sound so different now is because you didn't have like that wide musical spectrum that maybe yeah, like all the other kids yeah, had? Yeah. I think uh, it kind of helped us out because we didn't know there was a right way or a wrong way to play music. You know, when we get up there and play, that's just the sound that comes out of us. You know, playing as good as we know how to play the instruments. It's not like we set out from day one to sound like this band or that band. It's kind of like we just yeah. played and. That's what came out of it. I think kids just like listen to radio their whole lives or whatever. And so, I mean, they got to listen to it their whole lives and they just put all this bad music into their head for so many years <laughs> that now they're like stuck on it. And for us, you know, we never listened to the radio. So when we did get into it, we were like, dude, that's, you know, that's horrible. So we had to go back and try to find stuff that actually like, you know, could appease our ears. Okay. No, we actually, I mean, we're from Tennessee, but our dad, from Oklahoma, and these two are from Oklahoma, and our dad raised us like we yeah, hate Tennessee. Hate everybody else. <laughs> like, oh. Chambers, yeah. which is a more production savvy video. Yeah. So how was yeah. that whole experience? I mean, you know, as far as we're concerned, they could shoot every one of our videos in our basement. You know, everyone with the same backdrop because we really feel like it should only be about the song, but. Because of people always pegging us with, you know, thinking that we're from the 60s or whatever, we wanted to make a video that, you know, just to let people know that we are from now, you know. <laughs> but our next one, uh, well, it's not anything that's going to be released. We released it one in Europe, or for Europe, this uh, song. It's totally different. It's totally, like, a lot darker and a lot rawer, and it's like an 80s horror film. It's like The Lost Boys or something like that. So, and that's for wasted time, you said? Yeah, so maybe next video over here will be a little more less polished, you know, a little more raw. It seems like if the band would ever break up, then there was family issues and you almost have to stay together. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing, yeah, because we're family, like, we can break up and we know the next day it'll be, you know, over. We're actually broken up right now. <laughs> I'm out of the band, so. Uh, <laughs> We'll see how it, Who's gonna, uh, how it happens. Are there any other follow well siblings that could well, uh, replace They don't Caleb? go in the throat for nothing over there, really. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an equal say between the four members? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, kind of. I mean, these guys, the songwriters, so I mean, but yeah, it's pretty much yeah. equal. Well, they like wrote the songs on the last one. We're writing the new ones together. But I mean, it's yeah, we're pretty learning. much a democracy. It depends. I mean, I think that we trust each other enough that if one of us had to make a decision, we think that it would be the right decision for all of us. And so I mean, if it came down to one yeah. person, and we all take up for each other. Like, you know, it doesn't matter who's talking. You know, if someone says something about him, it's just like they said something about me. And so. We're all family, so yeah, it's a very much a democracy, and we're very much, we take up for one another, and we're very protective of one another, and, you know, we believe in one another, so. 
like Matt didn't answer. That was that. our little polyphonic spree moment there. Yeah, we were leaving one of them. Matt didn't even did. Do you think you guys ever have a DJ or a synth player? Uh, <laughs> No. Well, a synth, synth guitar, I yeah, maybe. Have a synth guitar maybe player. a synth guitar. I might break out a synth guitar. Nacho will play synth guitar. Yeah. We're trying to work some piano in, but we think it'd be cheesy to have a piano, so if we ever do, it'll be synth guitar, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. so we'll get heckled more. And you'll have to wear, like, a, like a big, like, you know, paint jacket and push the sleeves up. Like, <laughs> flock of seagulls. How about a gray one? one? Maybe a gray one. <laughs> Youth and Young Manhood was released over the UK first, and it went gold. Were you guys surprised at your success overseas? Definitely, yeah, I mean, definitely. we didn't know what to expect. You know, I mean, we wanted the whole, from the beginning, we wanted it to be something that was just kind of start out small and kind of people discovered it as opposed to it being shoved in your face, you know, from day one. So, uh, yeah, we were definitely surprised at the success of it, but, uh, no, hype is hype, so, I mean, whatever. Because there is like a, a southern hint to your music, and that's why it's almost surprising that like the UK would embrace it like they have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, real I don't confused. Know. <laughs> it kind of, it's, it happened like from day one over there. I mean, like the first shows that we played over there, we, we came from America playing in front of, you know, 30, 45 people, and like from our first show on, there we sold out so I mean it's like and they just get bigger and bigger every time so it's great I and mean, we love it over there.